Hey guys, welcome to Living the Logic. This is Manish Narayan. Today we're going to talk about Power Pivot and Power Query and how you can automate Excel dashboards using these two features. So let's get started. In front of me I have an Excel sheet that has three real world tables, sales, products, and a calendar table. So the first step in order to get going with the Power Pivot and Power Query, we're going to import all of these data sources or tables into our data model. So the first step is to load this data into our data model. So go ahead and click the data tab. Choose from table range. All right, you're going to see a little pop up here to create table. Make sure you check off my table has headers. I'm going to highlight the sales data here. Click on OK. All right, as soon as you do that, you're going to have the Power Query Editor window open. And you should see all your data here. Now, what we're going to do is we're not going to transform the data. We're going to directly load it. So click on Close and Load and choose Close and Load To. You're going to see another pop-up for the Import Data tab. First step, add this data to the data model. So you're going to check that off and we're going to choose new worksheet. Click on OK. All right, as soon as you do that, it's going to load table one. We'll go ahead and rename that to uh, sales. So I can rename that. Let's go ahead and name that sales. Okay, and it's giving me a warning here. It's saying rename the query. So it's going to rename all the associated data model tables. That's okay, we want to go ahead and do that, so choose Rename. All right, perfect. So sales data model has six rows loaded. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for uh, the products and the calendar table. So again, I'm going to highlight the products data. Go to the Data tab. Choose from Table Range. Again, check off my table has headers. Make sure the, the range is correct. Choose OK. And again, this is a repeat of the Power Query Editor window. So we're going to see our products lined up here in Power Query. I'm going to right click. Uh, if you go on the right side, you can actually either right click the table or you can go to the right side and rename it. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that to Products. OK, and hit the Tab button. And you'll see on the left side, it renamed it to a Products table. Again, uh, no transformation. We're going to go ahead and close and load to. Uh, make sure you choose Add This Data to the Data Model and a new worksheet. Okay, click on OK. So notice it uh, created a new sheet for us named Products. has three records. And I'm just going to quickly name, rename the other sheet to Sales. Perfect. All right, and uh, we're going to repeat this process for the calendar table. So go ahead and do that, do that for the calendar table. Select the range. Click on Data. Choose from table range. Make sure that my table has headers is checked off. Click on OK. All right, you should see the calendar table now in your Power Query editor. Go ahead and rename that to calendar. Hit tab. All right, and choose close and load to. Again, uh, choose add this data to the data model and leave it on a new worksheet. Choose OK. So now you'll have the calendar table already in a new worksheet. All right, I'm just going to zoom in here. So we have our sales data model, we have our products data model, and our calendar data model. All right. So the next step in order to automate our dashboard using Power Pivot, Power Query, we're going to go ahead and click on Power Pivot. Okay. Uh, now if you don't have Power Pivot as a ribbon icon on the top here in Excel. You can click on Search Excel for Power Pivot, okay, and it will ask you to uh, enable the feature. So you can go ahead and enable that, right? I have mine enabled here. So once you're under the Power Pivot tab, click on Manage. All right. Now under Manage, uh, you go to the Home, and you're going to click on the Diagram View. So here we're going to add, add some relationships. <clears throat> okay. So the first relationship we're going to add is from the sales table uh, to the uh, products table. Okay. 
Uh, here, I'm going to just rename this sales table this, from table one to sales. So let's go and do that. Okay. All right. So we'll change the query. Okay, we can change the query name later. But for right now, this is our sales table on the left side. We have products and calendar. So what I'm going to do is uh, click on the product ID and drag it to the product ID on the products table. All right, and it'll create a relationship for me. Okay. Notice it's a one to star it means one to many. Okay. So a product can be part of one product can be part of many sales transactions. Uh, the next relationship we're going to create is the date between the sales table and the calendar table. So go ahead and choose a date column on the sales table, drag it to the date column on the calendar table, right? And we have again a one-to-many uh, relationship from the sales table to the calendar table. Okay. Uh, now that you have uh, a relationship set up, what we can do is start to create calculated fields and advanced measures, right? So we're going to create a calculated column now. So if you go back to the home tab here, go to the data view. Okay. And notice here I have my sales table. I can right click and add a column here. So if I add a column, I'm going to say double click in and we'll call this uh, total sales. And we're going to give it a formula here. Okay. The formula total sales is going to be equal to the sales and that's going to be oh, let's hit equals equals sales and that's going to be the quantity times sales and um, since I have it named as table 1 let's call it table 1 here there we go so table one, that's going to be table one quantity times table one, and that's going to be times uh, the price, the unit price, right? So unit price. Okay, if you hit enter, watch what happens. All right, it, notice it automatically calculated the total sales for all the regions here uh, for each product sale, right? For quantity times unit price. So let's take an example, seven uh, product ID 103, 7 quantity times unit price of 30 is 210. So it generated that value. Okay. All right. So uh, next we can use this to quickly create a pivot table and a pivot chart and then include some slicers and make it dynamic. Okay. So it's kind of like a mini dashboard. All right. So, so now uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this here. We'll save it. So click on the save icon. Okay. I'm going to save this book here. So give it any name, let's replace it. Okay, so now that uh, we're ready, I'm going to go over to a new sheet here. Uh, let's add a new sheet. Okay, we'll name this uh, pivot charts. Okay, here I'm going to go ahead and insert. And we're going to choose a pivot table. Okay, and... Okay, and we're going to say use this workbooks data model. Okay, so we're going to say pivot table from data model. Okay, and I'm going to say existing worksheet pivot charts. Hit OK. All right, perfect. So if you look on the right side, you're going to see uh, uh, the pivot table fields. Okay. And the fields, uh, we're going we're gonna to set up the pivot chart here. First, we need to set up the pivot table, OK? So now that we have our data model on the right side, all right, we're going to drag the category from the products table. So expand the products table. Drag the category into the rows area, OK? So you'll see the different category. Let me zoom in here. So you'll see all the category, electronics, furniture, office supplies, OK? And then we, since we created a total sales, calculated column. We're going to go ahead and go to the table one, which is our sales table. And you'll see the total sales here. We generated this, right, dynamically. That's uh, the unit price times the quantity. We're going to drag that to the values area. Okay. Now we'll see all the some of the total sales for each category. Okay. That's beautiful. Uh, now we're going to drag one more column to the columns area, which is our year, right? So if we go to our calendar table, the top, we can take the year and drag it to the columns. OK, 
Okay, right now we have one year, which is 2023. And notice it gives me a total and a grand total here. Okay, and then uh, and then here I can now insert a pivot chart, right? So if I click anywhere within the pivot table, I can go to insert, choose pivot chart. Okay, and for now for now I'm going to just have this bar graph, okay, or clustered column. Click on OK. All right. Notice uh, it automatically generates a, a pivot chart. And what's different from a pivot chart than a standard chart? Well, you can start to slice things and filter the data within the chart itself. Okay. So uh, let's add a add some interactivity with the slicers. All right. So what we're going to do is click on our pivot chart. Okay. And you'll see under the pivot chart analyze, you can click on insert slicer. So I'm going to insert slicer, all right? And then here I'm going to choose a year from the calendar table, okay? So let's go to the calendar table, choose a year, click on OK. Notice now I have a nice little slicer for the year. Um, if I had more than one year, I can turn off the year and turn it on, choose multiple years. And I'm going to show you that with the, uh, with the category, for, let's say for the region, okay? So let's add another slicer, click on your pivot chart. Click on the pivot chart analyze, insert slicer, and I'm going to click on the uh, region uh, from my sales table. Okay, so choose the region. Perfect. All right, nice. I can move this over to the right here. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And now I have a dynamic dashboard. I can choose north region, uh, east region, south region. Now I have an interactive uh, pivot chart, right? So this is how you dynamically uh, create uh, interactivity with your pivot, pivot table, your pivot source data model, in this case, sales, products, and calendar. And you, and you quickly get a, a dynamic dashboard. Hey, guys, if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. See you next time.